Welcome to this Siemens PLC training video where we talk about some less common PLC topics that could really trip you up. Hopefully this video will save you hours of frustration. And if it does, be sure to hit that like button in order to get it out there to other engineers just like you and me that might be suffering through the same thing. As always, subscribe and ring the bell to get more automation tips just like this delivered directly to your YouTube. Let's get to it. We are going to be discussing two blocks that are used extensively when communicating to remote devices via Profibus. Some of you might be asking, who still uses Profibus these days? Or even, what in the world is Profibus and how is it different than Profinet? Well, there are millions of Profibus nodes still operating today and in some instances have much better performance than Profinet. Profibus is a RS-485 based serial communication network that at one time gave the best performance for communicating to remote devices. Now, if you are familiar with working with RS-485 networks, well, I feel for you because you are very aware of their limitations and if you have ever had to troubleshoot a Profibus network with more than a few nodes, feel free to comment about your experience so that we can help you through this trauma together. With all joking aside, most likely, if you were watching this video, you were wanting to learn about how to communicate with a device via Profibus so that you can update a system that has been faithfully running for decades. One thing about Profibus is that when it's done right, it's really tough. And that's why you will find it in control systems in some of the harshest industries on this planet. The two blocks that we will be discussing will be DP read data and DP write data. These can be found in all versions of Portal and Somatic Manager and have the official name Profibus Consistent Read Write Data. But first, let's talk about what these blocks accomplish and why they are needed. One of the limitations of Profibus is the transmission speed of the bus. Remember, it was introduced in 1989, so things were just starting to really get away from relay boards at the time. The maximum speed of the network is only 1.5 megabaud per second, and most of the time the baud rate used is even lower. Now there are reasons for this that we might get into in another video, but just know that it has nothing to do with Siemens in particular. As processor technology improved, and speeds increased, a problem presented itself. If you are trying to send data across any network, you have to store the data somewhere while it waits to be sent. There is an area in a Siemens PLC called the process image table where all data is stored and updated essentially once every cycle. This period changes based on the speed of the processor and the structure of the program. With serial communication like Profibus, the data lines up and a transmission starts and one byte is transmitted at a time and is received across the bus. Now, the PLC, for reasons that we won't get into here, can only guarantee to be able to move two words in memory without something else going on and changing things. This leads to a situation where the first bytes of data don't match the data that is in the last parts of the packet because the PLC updated in the middle of the transmission. This data is now considered inconsistent because the data represents two snapshots in time. For a lot of applications, this might not be a problem, but for some, it could be disastrous. For example, in complex drive systems, the packets being sent back and forth tend to get pretty long. These packets provide control information at the beginning and very precise set point and feedback data towards the end. If you have a motor running at high speed, the difference between two cycles could be significant and mean that the drive could fail if there ever was a mismatch. At best, this would be a nuisance. At worst, it could mean someone's life. Dramatic, I know. So because of this problem, Siemens has designed two blocks to make sure that your data always stays consistent when using the serial connection. DP read data and DP write data. These blocks grab a full snapshot of the data to be sent and make sure that the data doesn't get updated until it has been sent or received. Don't worry about how this is happening behind the scenes. Just know these blocks have been around for decades, saving engineers like you and me from annoying problems that only happen on your day off. So let's take a look at the structure of these blocks. I'll be discussing primarily the usage from TIA Portal, and I will highlight the one major difference in the software 
when it comes up. To find these blocks in Portal, go to your instruction tab in a ladder block and either search in the search box for dp read underscore dat or navigate to extended functions, distributed IO, others. Drag the block onto a rung to import the code. Alternatively, you can always insert a blank instruction block and type dprd underscore dat and press enter, and it'll import the code just the same. These blocks look fairly simple, and other than an error code output, they only use an address of the device you're connecting to and a record parameter. For both blocks in Portal, the L address parameter is the hardware ID of the device you're trying to communicate with. To find the hardware ID of a device, find it in the network view of the device and networks page and click on the device, look in the inspector window. Under the properties tab, find the system constant sub tab and select hardware submodule of the telegram if it's a drive or the module access point if it is another external device. In your code, you can enter this hardware identifier a couple of different ways. You can directly type in the number found in the section beforehand, but it doesn't give you any information about what you're communicating to. A better way is you can start typing the name of the device and find the appropriate system constant tag. If you don't take the time when you first set up your system to name your devices in a certain way, this can cause problems. That is why in most of the, my real projects, you will see the same naming scheme. Of course, I will mess up every now and then and not follow the same scheme if I'm in a hurry. But always, always, always name every single device in the network view something other than default. It will save you ages of time and headaches. Now, in Somatic Manager, there's no such thing as the hardware ID. So, this address is the first I.O. address of the device in hexadecimal format. This address can be found by selecting the device in the hardware configuration and looking in the bottom window at the first address of the input for DP read and the first address of the output for DP write and converting that number from decimal to hexadecimal. Use the following format. Now that you have the L address parameter set, let's determine how to set the record parameter. This can be a bit tricky because you have to use a pointer to the starting address of the record and then the number of bytes that are being transferred. Now, if you're unsure about how many bytes you're trying to send, there are a couple little tricks that I'll show you here. This is a real pointer from some remote distributed communications using puts and gets functions. Yes, these are very different functions, but the blocks are configured in the same way with the same record information. With that said, let's go to the data block I'm trying to send called remote station one data. Here you can see I'm trying to send out the master data to the remote station and receive in the local data. The master data is the first group of data in the block. As you can see, there are a few different types of data here and each tag has a starting offset. By default, these offsets are not shown because these blocks are optimized. To see these offsets, right click on the block and go to properties. Under general, uncheck the box that says optimize block access. You will need to do this for any pointer based function. As you can see, the last tag is an integer that starts at an offset of 32 bytes. To create a record, use the pointer designation as shown. You can easily figure out the total number of bytes by looking at the last offset, then adding how many bytes are in the data type that's represented by that tag. Be aware, this trick only works if you are starting at dbx 0.0. In my example, my local data starts at offset 34. So my pointer looks like this. Take a moment to look at the difference between what the pointer looks like when your data starts at 0.0, .0 and in the middle of the block, 34 in my example. Now using pointers is a powerful tool that we will discuss further in another video that can make some amazingly efficient code, but they are one of the most advanced programming techniques that do not need to be taken on lightly. So that's it. Once you've determined how your record should be named, you're done. These blocks will handle everything else. I would recommend tying at least a temporary variable to the return value output 
because if something goes wrong in the communication, an error code will be shown here and you have to have a tag to see the value if you were monitoring the block. There are also ways to use the trace function to record this error parameter. The list of error codes and their meanings are available by clicking on the block and pressing F1. Congratulations! You are now able to make sure your data is consistent when communicating to a remote device. That's all for this video. If it's been helpful, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more automation videos. If you use Siemens PLCs often, you might want to ring the bell so that as I start posting more, you won't miss any helpful information. As always, I love people on their automation journey, so please comment if you have questions about anything I've talked about in this video. Until next time, always keep growing. Bye!